I predict parents are going to homeschool their kids more in the next 10 years than ever before. I don't really want the school system telling me when I can and can't take my kids somewhere. Second reason is just what the schools are teaching these days. Obviously, the left-wing media and agenda has taken over a lot of the school system. And between 2017 and 2023, homeschooling went up more than 50 percent in almost half of the states with available data. D.C., New York, Rhode Island, and Seattle had increases above 90 percent. Because y'all need to stop encouraging people who are not prepared to homeschool their kids to homeschool their kids. There is a reason you need a degree and certification to teach kids in like public schools and stuff. I think you should homeschool your kid. They're your child. You only have this one child and you're either going to mess it up by putting it into that school system's hands or by putting it in your own. How can we as parents reject the classrooms of professionals with multiple degrees and certifications, handpick curriculum determining this is the best one, and also I can create better learning conditions for my child than the school system. Today, let's deep dive into homeschooling and why there's a huge rise in momentum over the past couple of years. You know, traditionally, homeschooling emerged in the 1970s, essentially out of anti-authoritarian leftist roots. Uh, you know, that then was gradually taken over by uh, conservative Christian families. And if there are fewer students in the public schools and more homeschooling, that's less money for an already, you know, in many places, cash-strapped public school system. Parents who choose to homeschool cite a number of problems with the traditional school system. The first of which is the number of hours a student spends at a desk sitting down. The alternative is play and learning through exploration. And this also feeds into the point of how unproductive a lot of the school day is. Some homeschool parents and kids claim that they can get the same curriculum done in 15 to 30 minutes a day per subject, as opposed to six hours, seven hours total in a school setting. And there are a lot of subtle issues embedded in this point as well. For example, when you are sitting down at a desk, you don't necessarily determine what subject you are learning. Instead, you are receiving whatever is being taught at the moment. And secondarily, you don't get to choose how long you get to focus on the subject because that is also predetermined in school period, which is a problem because as adults, we know that when we get into a state of flow, time flies back and we are super engrossed in whatever subject. Kids don't get that same luxury in the traditional school system. A homeschool setting encourages deep dive, exploration, passion, creative learning. And that learning can take place instead of weekly tests and quizzes over the period of more months. It's not a surprise that many actors and creative artists choose homeschooling so that they can focus and develop their true passions and skills. <laughs> My son Daniel, he's 11. He's a beekeeper, Rubik's Cube expert. He also is a computer programmer. This kids got it all. We lean into our kids' strengths. I think the public school system is a joke. Half of it's lame babysitting. One teacher per 30 students is ridiculous. Zero customization. But homeschooling is not just about actors who need teachers to come in at a random odd hours of the day while they work full time. Homeschool families truly believe that they're giving their children a better educational experience. Now it there's a number of different curriculums you can choose from that are both free and for purchase. There are a number of family-led co-ops that lead group activities or field trips to museums and nature classrooms <laughs> and other fun group activities. Parents also often subscribe their kids to soccer and other group sports in parallel to support that group socialization that <laughs> homeschooling really gets criticized for not having. If you put all those components together of a thoughtful curriculum, extracurricular activities, and learning through field trips and exploratory play, that stands in stark opposition to especially the image of an under-resourced, rowdy, crowded classroom in a poor school district. If you're sick of feeling that gut-wrenching worry fill you as you drop your kids off for school each day and are curious about homeschooling, then this video is for you. I'm Jenny, I'm a homeschooling mom of five, including our triplets, and I've homeschooled for about three years now. I also wanna share that Easy Peasy Homeschool and The Good and the Beautiful both offer free homeschool curriculums if cost is a concern. Another common question is how do you homeschool multiple kids? So I'm gonna show you how we do it. Since my older two kids can both read and write independently, I get them started on the work they can do on their own while I teach the triplets kindergarten. With them, I like to start with what I call a morning warm up. We do handwriting and calendar time. After reviewing the days of the week and the months of the year, we move on to language arts. Four of my five kids use The Good and the Beautiful for language arts, and it is a rock solid curriculum that produces great readers. My second grader is able to read, write, and spell well above her grade level. Four of my five also use Horizons curriculum for math. I will say it's an advanced curriculum, so if you have a kiddo that struggles with math, you may have to slow down or switch to a different one. My oldest does most of his learning at a co op twice a week, so I finish up the day when he's home on going over anything he needs review on. Despite the socialization, you might still argue that 
students will miss out on the traditional school experience of 20 to 30 kids in a classroom and navigating all of the issues that comes with that. But the problem is that's not necessarily a good thing. That's just the way that things have been done. One point is the bullying and harassment that a lot of kids go through. But secondarily, a lot of academics espouse this school of thought that schools were initially created not even for education purposes, but rather for moral and social training in the factory system. That is when industrialization came to a head, factory owners needed docile and disciplined workers. Schools were designed to enforce top-down management, listening to authority, rote memorization, and discipline moral training of worker bees as opposed to trying to figure out the holistic education of a child which is the current focus in today's world. While this is a very evocative imagery, it also presumes the fact that schools haven't changed in the past 200-300 years, which is just not the case. A lot of classrooms have moved beyond rote memorization and they build in the same topics of exploratory play, learning through field trips, and other non-sedentary activities. So it's not about arguing yes or no, but it's more productive to look at the classroom and say, what remnants do I see of the old school way of learning and does this existing school system encourage my child's sense of creative play and passion? Is my child growing as a full person as a result of it, uh, as opposed to learning and memorizing facts? On the other hand, let's talk about how the ideal homeschool doesn't always come to fruition. And perhaps we can try to imagine a mom who is trying to do it all, raising three kids of different needs, because they're obviously in different age groups, battling for their attention in the home to get school subjects done, not being able to go outside potentially because it's hard to corral kids or find activities in under-resourced neighborhoods that maybe don't have a public library with story time and other extracurriculars. That parent might also have ideological issues Issues. That is, they don't want their kids to be exposed to certain topics. And so there is a bubble issue with what the parent is teaching as well. And of course, you might have seen those videos where homeschool is just about doing chores. <laughs> that's not homeschooling and that's not schooling at all. If you are hearing from public school teachers that homeschooling kids are behind, they're right. The students who are coming back to public school after being homeschooled, there's usually a reason why they're returning. And a lot of times that reason is that homeschooling didn't work out. What we're seeing are the children who either didn't do well during homeschool, the parents didn't even bother to do like a homeschooling program, they just kind of like had them playing video games all day or whatever. Like there's all different reasons. And I did have a few exceptions and it was usually parents that had to put their kid back in school because they had to go to work, go back to work for financial reasons. And a lot of times those students were actually above the rest of my public school students. Ultimately, it's about resources. If you could hire a tutor to hammer into the core subjects for two hours a day and then encourage your child to pursue all of their creative passions and building and art for the next six hours, then that tutor would take your child out to soccer and a museum and the child would come back after a full day of play. You might very well be setting up a better environment than the current school system. This is what it's actually like being homeschooled. I can get all my work done by 12 o'clock and then I'll have the rest of the day to do whatever else I want. The way I meet friends is through a youth group and theater and I've made so many good friends. And, and then, even if it's not a private tutor, but it is a co-op and it's a, a collection of homeschool moms who are all coming together to support their kids, take turns, learning different subjects in a variety of environments, you would get a very similar experience. And now states of California also give homeschool families funding to support those kinds of activities on an annual basis. Doing homeschooling right is about raising the bar on what we expect out of our education system. And that's why a lot of entrepreneurs, wealthy people, people with access to resources, try that route as opposed to private school, as opposed to public school. Would you homeschool your children after hearing this video essay? I uh, would love to hear your thoughts if I missed out on any critical points in the comments. And if you're new to my channel, I'm going to be doing more videos on education, raising children, and careers in the 21st century. So please subscribe and hope to see you soon.